Hello Joyful Ones, Joan Craig here with Choose Joyful Health. In this video, I'm going to go over the difference between bone mineral density and fracture risk. Those might seem like some big heavy topics, and they are. Here's the, here's the main thing. Let's say you go get your bone mineral density tested and you get your results back and your doctor says that you have osteopenia or osteoporosis. This is not a death sentence or a doom sentence that you are going to break a bone. And here's why. The bone mineral density test tests one thing. It tests your bone mineral density. It's a, it's a snapshot of what your bones contain at that moment. And it does not show other qualities of bone, such as how flexible it is, how resilient it is, and also the, the makeup of the bone, such as the ratios of collagen. Fracture risk, on the other hand, is way bigger and more complex and more dynamic. It's, it's a moving target. Therefore, it's a little bit more difficult to assess. Fracture risk includes things like your age, if you have had a previous fracture, it includes being on certain prescription medicines that might impact your balance or make your bones weaker. It includes your family history. Fracture risk also includes your activity level, your nutrition, your stress levels, your sleep, and a lot of other lifestyle factors. So when you look at the research about bone health, a lot of them rely heavily on the bone mineral density test because it's much easier to measure. Just wanted to lay that out there because that was helpful for me to understand that one score doesn't necessarily dictate how the rest of your life is going to go. There's way more involved than that. Let's go over the score that you get back you get a T-score and a Z-score. Now this part was really enlightening for me. The T-score is the one that helps define whether you have osteoporosis or not. The T-score compares you to Caucasian women who are between 20 and 30 years old. Now first of all, when we consider that 90 to 95% of a woman's bone mass peaks at age 18, and I don't say that to be depressing, but it's a fact, we can figure that by the time we're getting a bone mineral density test, it has gone down from those women who are between 20 and 30 years old. The other important thing to consider with this is, it's comparing you to the mean score, the middle score, not necessarily to people of your same size. So if you're like me and you're a smaller than average person with smaller than average bones, your bone mineral density T-score may come back low, but that's just part of you being you, smaller than average. The other score that you'll receive is your Z-score. The Z-score compares you to other people of your same gender, same ethnicity, and same age or age range. Neither one of these really compares apples to apples. So let's take a little history of the definition of osteoporosis. Back in 1993, the World Health Organization used the T-score only as a way to diagnose people with osteoporosis. And since 2008, they've been using something called the FRAX, F-R-A-X, which is the Fracture Risk Assessment Tool. So that leads us into what other tests you might get besides the bone mineral density test. One is this FRAX, and you can actually take it online or you can do it with your medical practitioners. It doesn't work for everyone because if you're already taking uh, prescription drugs, pharmaceutical drugs for bone mineral density, it does not give you relevant scores. The best category of people to take the FRAX are postmenopausal women over 40 who are not taking any pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical drugs for bone mineral density. But it's important, it does cover those other, some of those other lifestyle factors. The second test that you can ask for is called vertebral fracture assessment. 
This is done at the same time as your bone mineral density scan. The difference is it's also measuring your upper back. When you get your, your scores back, it's usually for your hip and your lumbar spine. But let's think about this. And there's, that's important. But where do people get the hunch, the dowager's hump? They get it in the upper spine, and that's only measured if you also get that thoracic spine. And I'm fairly sure you have to request it. The third thing to keep in mind with your testing is that DEXA scanners, just like scales, vary. It's important, if you can, to get tested on the same exact machine at the same lab. It's not always possible, but if it is and you got a test five years ago and they want to test you again, ask to be seen on the same piece of equipment. One more thing about these medical tests and the results. I want you to know that osteopenia is not a disease. Osteopenia is just low bone mineral density. And again, that could come from many factors. The bottom line is that we all want to have healthy bones. We don't necessarily want strong, brittle bones or just bones that are dense on a test, but not necessarily resilient and adaptable to the challenges that life is going to bring us. I'm committed to doing everything possible to have strong, resilient, balanced bones, and I want that for you too. I would love for you to come and check out ChooseJoyfulHealth.com to find out about a new course called Balanced Bones and some other free bone health education resources that I'm going to be offering there. I can't wait to see you there. Please let me know if you have any questions and I can help you have healthy, resilient, balanced bones.